how can we compute the Laplace transform of more complicated functions? And how can we use the Laplace transform to solve differential equations? We will see examples of these problems in this video. Let's start with the Laplace transform of, for example, sine of omega t, t where omega is just some real parameter. So we know how to compute it. You want the integral with respect to t, you add e to the power minus st, and you can write the sine of omega t as 1 over 2i e to the power i omega t minus e to the power minus i omega t. Because if you write it in this way, you can uh, and get two exponentials, and integrating exponentials is easy because you get uh, here e to the power minus s plus i omega t. So if you integrate it, you get your e to the power i omega minus s times t divided by i omega minus s. And for the other one, you get a minus, and we have e to the power minus st and e to the power minus i omega t. So you get a e to the power minus i omega minus s times t is antiderivative, and you have to divide by uh, minus i omega minus s, and then evaluate between the two boundaries. Well, provided you take your s appropriately, the contributions to the upper bound vanish, you only have the contributions from the lower bound, so you keep your 1 over 2i on the lower boundary, you get from this part uh, 1 times uh, 1 over i omega minus s with an additional minus sign for the because you're on the lower boundary, so this term over here, and for the other term, you get a minus and the minus over here, of course, again the 1 over 2i, and then we get a uh, 1 over minus i omega minus s with an additional minus sign because uh, you're on the lower boundary, so 1 over s plus i omega. And you can uh, make from those two fractions one fraction by uh, multiplying uh, by with s plus i omega the first one and the other one with i s minus i omega. And you get in the denominator an s squared plus omega squared and in the numerator uh, you get an s plus i omega minus s minus i omega, so 2i omega divided by 2i equals an omega. So there you have your Laplace transform of the sine of omega t. And this works uh, if the upper uh, boundaries of your integral vanish, and for that you need to be the real part of S to be positive. Let's try to solve a differential equation now using Laplace transforms. So we take u double plus omega squared times u equals zero, u zero of zero equals zero, and u prime of zero equals omega second order linear differential equation. So I've seen already for, uh, this, this one in the first year, you can use, uh, you can solve this differential equation with more basic techniques, but let's apply the Laplace transform to see how it works, to see the Laplace transform in action. So what do you do? It? Well, you take the Laplace transform of the left-hand side equals the Laplace transform of the right-hand side. The Laplace transform of zero equals zero, of course, because you're integrating zero. And then we have to compute the Laplace transform of the left-hand side. Laplace of u double, well, the Laplace transform of the derivative was s times the Laplace transform of the function minus uh, the uh, function value in zero. So what you get, if you take the Laplace transform of the second derivative, you get s times the Laplace transform of the first derivative minus u prime in zero. And u prime in zero was given as omega, so we, uh, uh, so you get a minus omega from the uh, minus u prime of zero. And then you can do this again. You compute the Laplace transform of u prime. That equals s times the Laplace transform of u minus uh, the function value at zero, which is zero. So what you get, here you have your uh, Laplace transform of uh, u prime. Uh, you kept the minus omega. This term becomes zero over here. So we are, we are left with an s squared times the Laplace transform of u minus your omega. And let's call the Laplace transform of u just capital U of s, so we get a s squared times u of s minus omega. So our second derivative becomes s squared times the Laplace transform of u and some constant. Now what do we get for the a full equation? Well, the Laplace transform is done using an integral, which is a linear operation, so you can split it in those parts equals zero, which we had for the right-hand side. 
you had already found the Laplacian form of u double equals s squared times u minus omega, and we add the omega squared u of s equals zero, and then we can solve for u of s. It's now an algebraic equation. We have s squared plus omega squared times u of s equals omega, so we can solve for capital U of s. So now, uh, instead of solving a differential equation, we had to solve an algebraic equation, which was trivial in this case. So we find a Laplace transform of uh, the solution. But how do we find our original function back? Well, in this case, we're lucky we because we found capital U of s equals omega divided by s squared plus omega squared. And we know the original function because we in our first example, we found that the Laplace transform of sine omega t is exactly this function omega divided by s squared plus omega squared. So isn't that lucky? So now we can find our u of t immediately because that has to be sine of omega t because the Laplace transform of uh, sine omega t was exactly this function over there. So that's how you uh, use the Laplace transform to solve differential equations. Let's take a look at the third example. Let's try to find the Laplace transform of uh, other functions we encounter very often, functions of the form t to the power n, where n is some positive power. We start with the Laplace transform of t to the power 0, which is basically 1. So we integrate each power minus ts times 1 ds, that's uh, trivial, so you get a minus 1 over s, times e to the power minus ts, plug in the boundaries, of course you need again the real part of s to be bigger than 0 in order to get rid of the upper boundary, and you get 1 over s. So that's for t to the power 0. What about some general power, t to the power n? Well, then you have t to the power n over here instead of a 1. You can use uh, integration by uh, parts again, but now we integrate the e to the power minus ts first, which gives us a minus 1 over s times e to the power minus ts times t to the power n between 0 and infinity minus uh, the derivative of t to the power n, so n times t to the power n minus 1. So you can put n for in front of the integration sign, here you have your t to the power uh, n minus 1, and you keep your s times 1 over s times e to the power minus ts. You can put the 1 over s in front of the integration sign, because it doesn't depend on t, and here you have your e to the power minus ts. And what you observe is that you get uh, from this part, no contributions, t equals 0, you have 0, and on infinity, uh, you vanish as well, because you had to take your real part of s, again, positive, in order to get rid of the integrand on the upper boundary, so you get rid of the first term, and you observe that what you have left is n over s times the Laplace transform of t to the power n minus 1. So if you have the Laplace transform of t to the power n minus 1, you can compute the Laplace transform of t to the power n. So you can use the Laplace transform of t to the power 0 to compute the Laplace transform of t. Laplace transform of t, plug in, uh, uh, plug in n equals 1. Uh, Laplace transform of t equals 1 over s times the Laplace transform of 1. So you get 1 over s squared. Laplace transform of t squared, plug in n equals 2, equals 2 over s times the previous Laplace transform, 2 over s times 1 over s squared, so 2 over s cubed. The next one you will get 3 over s times 2 over s cubed, so 3 times 2 over s to the power 4. And then you will get 4 over s times t 2 times 3 over s cubed, so 2 times 3 times 4 over s to the power 5, etc., etc. And then you observe the pattern, of course. In the numerator, you will, you will get an n factorial, 4 times 2, 3 times 2, or n times n minus 1, etc. And in the numerator, you get an s to the power n minus 1. So that's how you can compute the Laplace transform of uh, all polynomial functions.